morning everyone, it's the start of another day and it looks like it's going to be a hot one as well. It's about 9.30 and I imagine it's 24, 25 degrees, so give it another couple of hours and I think we might be touching 30. So I need to drink plenty of water along the way. I've got about 90 kilometres to do today and I'm heading to a place called Pag Island. Uh, it's connected by this end by a bridge, uh, but when I leave Pag Island tomorrow I'll need to take a ferry across to the mainland. Uh, so anything else to say? Nah, 90 kilometres, plenty of hills, so I need to drink well and eat well. And I think I'll just enjoy the views and take it nice and easy. So I should give you some videos from the road and talk to you in a bit. Cheers for now. So the campground cost eight euros for the night. And what I found is that along this section of Croatian coastline, there's a lot of small auto camps. And if you Google auto camp or camping in Croatia, you're not gonna find half of these places. You really kind of have to be on the ground to find them. So what I would suggest is if you're planning a bicycle tour, you kind of need to leave some of it for luck. You know roughly where you're going to stay, but you're going to find plenty of camping places. So basically, where there's a small town or a village on the coastline, you're going to find a camping or an auto camp. Now, the prices will vary, so just put your head in. If you like the sound of the price, then stay. If you don't, then move on. And obviously, the price is also going to depend on the season as well. So when it's peak season, you can expect to pay a lot more. What I learned is to stay away from the bigger campgrounds in Croatia as they offer less value for money. Often the facilities are actually worse and they cost a lot more. Anyway, on to the day cycling. As this is a long video, I probably won't talk all the way through it as I'll run out of things to say. I know, me run out of things to say, but there we go. So, the, the day was a nice clear blue sky day and obviously it was a little bit hot as well and it was also quite a lot of hills today. Now someone said, they gave me a bit of feedback and said, you're making this tour look very easy. Well, in a way I do take that as a compliment, so thank you very much. If it does look easy, it's because I'm putting into play a lot of bicycle tour and experience. I mean, I've done some you know, much longer trips and in much harder countries. I mean, when I had to cycle through Sudan and Ethiopia, these were very challenging places. Croatia is not challenging on that same level. Of course, the terrain is still hilly, but it's not as challenging as, you know, not literally knowing where the next water is or where the next village is. That's, uh, that is a different ball game. With Croatia, it is nice and easy, basically. You do 80 kilometers, there's going to be some sort of town or village somewhere, and it will have a camping if you want. And I, you could wild camp this section of uh, that I did today. There was plenty of places you could have wild camped. It's just that I'm not wild camping on this trip at the moment. So this is me just uh, heading towards the city of Zadar. I didn't actually enter the city, I skirted around the outside in the end. There was no need for me to enter. And the road itself was lovely and new, nice and smooth. So it made it uh, nice, nice swift work of it really. And at times there was also little bits of bicycle paths as well. And sometimes these were handy and sometimes they just ended abruptly. The problem with a bicycle path is if it is not labelled, uh, marked up clearly and signposted clearly, you just never know when it's going to end. So you get off the road and onto a bike path, but if you've only pedalled for you know, 300 metres and then the path ends, it's kind of a waste of time and energy because then you go back onto the road again. So this is uh, kind of a semi-path now, if you, and you can see where the line is. And again, this just ended uh, basically outside of a shopping mall, and that was the end of the of the path. So it was nice to be off the traffic, off the, off the way of the traffic for a while. But you know, it did end a little bit suddenly. But there you go. Can't, you know, not going to complain about everything or anything. In fact, I think it was a great day today. So, as I said, somebody said I'm making, it, making the tour look easy. So, there's a bit of experience in there, and I know that on longer days that I'll finish in a hotel because I want to rest up. And uh, I know when it rains, I'm going to sit out in the rain so I don't get wet. And it's just these little things that help make the tour just go that little bit smoother. Now, the other side of it is, is that there are times when it is hard work. Like today, I had to dig deep on some, some parts. It was, a, it was a long day. There were some tough hills and you do have to sort of look inside yourself and go okay I really need to get this done even though it'd be like just as easy just to say ah sod it for the day I'm going to stop and chill out which I would have liked to have done sort of 30 kilometers short on here but in a way I'm glad I didn't because once I had got onto Pag Island itself it was really stunningly beautiful so I'm going to stop talking for a while and let you get some pictures of the road and then as I, we get closer to Pag Island I'll start talking again
So then, as I cut across the country, I could all of a sudden see the coast in front of me. And it was a very nice sight. It was lovely clear day and you could see the island in front and the coastline as well and some sandy beaches. So I took a little break uh, just before I headed down and then it was time to head for the bridge. Uh, on the map, it was I was really unsure as to how long this bridge would be, and it wasn't that long in the end. But uh, it was it was nice to cycle over all the same anyway. And this is me messing around with a selfie stick. I wasn't going too fast, honestly. It wasn't dangerous at all. In fact, I looked like cool and relaxed doing it. Yeah, kind of cool. I suppose I could have mixed this all much better in the video editor, but it's now 11 o'clock at night and I'm a little bit tired after cycling 100 kilometers in the day, so it'll have to do the way it is. So as I was saying, Croatia has got some stunning coastline and uh, this section is quite noticeable because of the lack of trees. Now there was a headwind blowing over as well. So not only have I got some hills, I've also got a headwind I'm working against. This is the, um, the bridge leading across to Pag Island. And I thought I'd give you a view there to the right as well. I just love the way the clouds just seem to be so clear. And yeah, this is quite a special little area this. So, and it was really nice cycling. It's probably some of the best day cycling of the trip actually. So the bridge wasn't actually that long, it just took, I don't know, like a couple of minutes to get across. On the other end, uh, tomorrow I'm expecting to have to catch a ferry, and I think it's not quite peak season yet, so there'll be some sort of time, so I'll perhaps have to wait for like a maximum of half an hour or so. On the other side of the bridge, I'll look back the way I came, and just panned across, and there seems to be some sort of castle or defensive structure down there. Not too sure what it's about, again, I'm on such, like... They're tight deadlines, I haven't got time to go down and explore things like this, which is a shame on the one hand, but uh, maybe it's there for next time if we decide to come back to Croatia and do some bicycle touring. So then it was cycling through Pag and it was almost like a lunar landscape. There was nothing really growing to start off with and it's just sort of like rock and it's quite barren and the wind was blowing across. And this is the point where I needed to dig deep a little bit because at this point I was a little bit tired you know, despite sort of drinking and eating as much as I could, it's, uh, you know, it's difficult to keep your energy levels going. Plus, I hadn't had a cup of coffee all day, which was something I would have to sort out for the following day. And I saw quite a few cyclists on this section. I'm not sure if there's a local cycle club that are practicing around uh, Pag Island area or if there was like a mini tour or competition or what was going on. But I saw quite a few cyclists following each other. So I uh, don't, know. don't know if that's interesting to you. It was kind of interesting to me. That was a picture of some sort of general. I'm not entirely too sure why it was there. Just thought I'd put it on there. you catch the name of that one? Yep, Camping Jerko or Hotel Jerko. Nice name. So once I reached Pag uh, City or town, which I guess is the capital of Pag Island, I cut across it and then took a very minor road which followed the coast. Now this part was the best cycling of the day and of the trip. It started off as a quiet country lane almost with the coast on the right hand side. 
and then it turned into a dirt track uh, as I went along and obviously at this point because it was the best cycling my GoPro eventually runs out doesn't it obviously so the first thing I'm going to do when I get to some sort of big city which I think now will be Bratislava is invest in an extra battery for the GoPro because this is starting to irritate me somewhat anyway so I follow this coast road and uh, it's uh, yeah, it's it was a very special part of the coast. Oh, just going to stop off for a drink first, though, because I'm a little bit thirsty. And these markets are quite a feature everywhere. It seems every like small village has got a market. And this is an example of the coastline that I was following. So I took this on my um, phone camera and just panned around. And yeah, you can see how good it is. Anyhow, I then ended the day uh, in a hotel in a place called. Lan or Calon and that's all I've got to say. Great day cycle and I will see you next time. Cheers for now.